But these new machines quickly found their niche. Fitted with cameras, they became spies in the sky, plotting artillery targets and troop movements. Neither side wanted their enemy to have this crucial intelligence. The solution was to replace the camera with a gun, turning passive airplanes into weapons with one purpose, to shoot down enemy aircraft. Trailing barbed wire along behind the airplane to carrying duck guns, pistols, rifles. All of them were very difficult to aim, didn't have a killer effect when they got there, and weren't very effective in taking out other aircraft. They needed a focused weapon, a flying machine gun, to reliably down the enemy. With the birth of the fighter plane, a furious arms race quickly developed. Soon the air was filled with these flying guns. For the reconnaissance crews fighting this new kind of war, the skies turned deadly. The one that shot us down, he come out of the sun. Every third bullet was a tracer bullet. You could see him coming like this, and you think, oh, the next one must hit me. And, of course, bullets had hit the engine. So we just sail down like this, looked for a nice field, landed on the field, hit a ditch, and over we went. Fighters were the only way to protect reconnaissance aircraft. Slow and stable, they made easy targets. To get to these spy planes, opposing fighters would have to battle it out with each other first. The measure of a fighter's ability would be how good it was at shooting down enemy fighters. The power of these fighters' weapons were vital to its success in World War I. But both sides had equally good machine guns, so air supremacy was decided by the performance of the aircraft. Pilots won battles with a fighter that had superior speed, could climb fast, turn fast, give better visibility, and respond quickly. You want the aircraft to react instantaneously to any kind of a input that you make to the either the stick or the throttles or the rudders in order to maneuver as aggressively and as rapidly as you can in order to get your nose on for that first shot opportunity in a visual flight. Did the Allied Sopwith Camel or the German Fokker triplane best combine these sometimes conflicting requirements in order to produce the more aggressive and deadly fighter? The Allies' greatest weapon in their battle for air supremacy was this plane, the Sopwith Airplane Company's Camel. King of the Allied fighters, it shot down more aircraft than any other fighter in World War I. This was Germany's response. From the Fokker Aircraft Company came the DR-1 triplane, the Camel's most famous rival. But which fighter was best at dominating the skies? To find out, the Fokker and the Sopwith are going back into the air. To make an aircraft stable, designers rake the wings upwards. This upward angling is called dihedral and can clearly be seen on the bottom wing of the camel. If the plane rolls, the wing going downward generates more lift than the wing going upwards, which tends to right the aircraft, making it more stable. Compare this with Germany's Fokker DR-1. Its wings are absolutely straight with no dihedral and no inherent stability, making the Fokker a very maneuverable fighter but like many of the greatest fighters, a very twitchy machine to fly. It was a bit like balancing a billiard ball on the end of a billiard cue. So um, it's a constant jostle all the time when you're flying the airplane. A little bit like flying a helicopter, whereas if you take your hands off the controls, it'll just wander off straight away and you, you've got to pick it up again. So it's an airplane that you, you don't take your hands off it. Yeah, if you do, well, it'll, things happen very quickly. This instability or twitchiness made the Fokker a more dangerous dogfighter than the Sopwith Camel, if the pilot flying it had enough aggression and skill. The obvious example is someone like Manfred von Richthofen, who 
absolutely adores the triplane from all the evidence we can see. He has more than one example. The most famous one, of course, is the one that's painted bright red, but in fact, there are times where he has five or six aircraft for his personal use. With 80 kills to his credit, Richthofen, known as the Red Baron, was the war's greatest fighter pilot. It's hard to imagine a better endorsement of the Fokker DR-1's abilities. It was less vulnerable, faster to climb, and more agile. The Germans may have thought that the camel's position looked hopeless. But in the regular dogfights between these two planes, the camel had its own answers to the Fokker's technical edge.